Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Miss Carrillo. Okay, as you know, today we're going to continue on with the ozone layer. And as we go through the ozone layer today, you're going to get an opportunity to read an article about the ozone layer. Before we start our lesson today, let's go ahead and read our objective together. On the count of three, one, two, and go. Today I will use inference skills to determine the author's purpose for writing the text. I need a volunteer to raise their hand and tell me what keywords do you see in your objective that's going to help us understand what our learning goal is for today. Wow. Um, Samson. One keyword I see in our objective today is inference. Is inference. We've talked about inference before, so that's definitely one keyword. Does anyone see another one that they're familiar with? Yes, Alexis. I think another keyword is determined. We need to determine, absolutely, we need to determine what our inference skills are and how they're related to our text. And one more, yes. Writing. Absolutely, we will definitely be using our writing skills as we go through our objective today. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at our first task. Let's go ahead and read our Common Core standard for today. Ready and go. Common Core Reading Standard. Reading 1.5.1. First bullet, reading informational text. Number one, students will quote accurately from a text when explaining what the text says explicitly and when drawing inferences from the text. Can someone raise their hand and tell me the repeated word? There's a word that we repeated in our objective and our standard. Think about it first. Put your thinking caps on. Okay, think about the repeated word that you see. And when you have that thought in your head, you can raise your hand. Okay, Lisseth, what word do you see repeated here? I see inferences. You see inferences, thumbs up, it was, that was your thought as well. Inferences is both in our objective and in our standards, so that's very important to what we're doing today. Okay, next slide. So let's review what inferencing is. We've talked about inferencing in class before, but let's go ahead and read it together as a review. Ready and go. Inference is being able to figure something out by looking at the clues and by using prior knowledge. Things you already know about, whether it's from reading the book or from life experience. So for example, I'll give you an inference. Last night, I came home, I was all sweaty, my clothes were all drenched, I got in the house, I was so thirsty, I had to hurry up and drink some water. Can anybody use their inferencing skills to determine what you think I just did? What did I just do? Jocelyn. I can infer that last night when, when you got home that you were probably teaching your Zumba class. Well, how do you know that, that I was teaching my Zumba class? That you, were, that you came home and that you were sweaty and that you had to drink a lot of water. Very good. Thank you for extending your sentence. Absolutely. So the clues that I gave her prompted her to say, you know what, you were teaching Zumba. Do you know I teach it? Do you know I'm a Zumba instructor? Absolutely. So you knew that about me. Okay, I need a volunteer if you want to. Let's stand up and read another example of inferencing is. All right, good. Read class. For example, if you Absolutely, thank you. Very good class. What Ms. Korea wants you to do now is I want you to think of your own clues so that you and your partner can determine and practice a little bit of inferencing before we actually read our text. So if you are partner A, raise your hand. Okay, partner A, put your thinking cap on. I want you to come up with a few clues about something you're very interested in, maybe a hobby, maybe something you like to do on the side, anything that you want. And try to come up with a few clues that you can share with to your partner B. Partner B, raise your hand. Okay, partner B, your job is to infer 
what partner A is describing to you. Can you do that for me? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Capson. I'll give you 60 seconds. Okay, so I was in Las Vegas. I was coughing really, really hard, and my eyes were turning very, very dark red, like the color of my skirt. I confirmed that you was having an asthma attack in Las Vegas. I was I was on the field in my cleats and shoe guards, and we were running around a lot chasing the ball. I can't wait that you was outside playing it out in the yard. Very good, boys and girls, signal on. Okay, if you can pull out your article that we're going to discuss this morning. As you know, with closed reading, it's important that you come up with the ideas in the text, things that you believe are references, vocabulary words that you feel are important. Oftentimes, as a teacher, we want to give you all the answers. But today, you will be coming up with your own vocabulary list, and you will be coming up with your own questions and answers for today. Okay, boys and girls, let's go ahead and look at our checklist for your first read. Read bullet number one. I need to see highlighters. I need to know you're ready. Good. Highlighters down. Next. Read the text. Absolutely. And how many times does a scholar read a text often? Three times. Three times. Very good. Next bullet. Circle three to five keywords in each paragraph you are important to understand the text. Absolutely. And our last bullet for today. Discuss, that's, a, that's okay, discuss your thoughts with your partner. But before we do that, let's just review the four L's of a productive listener and a partner. So our scholar Bilal is going to take us through that. Four L's of productive partners. Classroom number one. Look at your partner's eyes. Classroom number two. Lean towards your partner. Classroom number three. Lower your voice. Classroom number four, listen attentively. Okay, boys and girls, highlighters in your hand. Remember what your task is on your first read. You're looking for keywords associated with the topic or the ozone layer, important topic ideas that you think are important for us to learn as we go through our inferencing today. On your mark, get set, begin. Okay, who are we? Mighty, mighty Tigers. Okay, Mighty Tigers. Time for cooperative sharing. So let's reread our last bullet after our first read. What does our bullet say? Discuss your thoughts with your partner. So what you want to do, remember you were to find three to five key words that, is, that are related to the topic of the ozone layer. Am I correct? Absolutely. So what I want you to do when you share with your partner, make sure that's what you do. Before you do so, take your whiteboards, write down the three or five words that you chose. Write them on your whiteboard so that when it's time to discuss with your partner, you have it right in front of you. turn to your partners. Partner B, you're going to share first. Remember, share out your vocabulary word that you chose and why you believe it's important to our topic. Ready and discuss. I think that the ozone layer is one of the key words because that is the topic we're talking about. And another word that I circled is ultraviolet rays because that is the thing that the ozone layer is protecting us from. And UV radiation is the thing that comes from the ultraviolet rays. And the troposphere is part of the ozone layer, which is bad. And the stratosphere is part of the ozone layer, which is good. 
and those were my keywords. Did you um, get to do what paragraph and what sentence? Um, what I put down is the ozone layer, and it is in paragraph one, sentence one. The atmosphere is in paragraph two, sentence two. The stratosphere is in paragraph two, sentence four. CPS is, um, I put that, I circled that one because that's the thing that is destroying the ozone layer and it is in paragraph three, sentence one. And the UV rays are the ones that are destroying it too. And I didn't get a chance to put down where it was. Okay, thank you boys and girls. We have a minute or two here for shared volunteers. Does anybody just want to share out really, really quickly? Can't take too long because we have to move on. Make sure you give us your why you, make sure you infer why you chose that word and how it's related to the topic. Go ahead, sweetheart. I chose Stand up. the word Okay. Saul? I chose ozone layer because it protects us from the sun and the UV rays. Thank you. Navi? I chose ozone I chose ozone the region because it helps because of if it means the ozone layer getting thinner and thinner and it can probably die if it goes away. I chose the troposphere because troposphere and the ozone is really bad. It makes smog which is in cars and you have to go take a small check every two years and if you're not if you don't pass you might get your car suspended thank you for extending your answer all of those answers are directly related to the topic of what the ozone. the ozone layer. Okay, very good, boys and girls. Let's go on to our second task. Um, let's go ahead and read the first bullet. Read through the article and answer the following questions. So go ahead and wipe your whiteboards off. Now, after reading the article, there are lots of reasons why the author chose to actually write this article, and you'll be using your inferencing skills today. So using, once again, I'll repeat it, using the information from the article, what is the ozone layer and its purpose for our planet? The author doesn't directly tell us what it is. So it's important for you to use your what? Brain. Your brain, your inferencing skills to determine why would this author write this? What is the purpose for it? And what is the ozone layer? And how does it protect our planet? Do you understand? Yes. Okay, before we do that, Ms. Carrillo is going to read it to you. The purpose of me reading the article to you is to help you pronounce some of the words that are here. Some of them are difficult to pronounce, so if you had difficulty as I was going around, I heard a lot of us struggling with the words. So it's important for me to read it to you at least once so that you can understand the pronunciation. So you can do two things. You can either follow me on the board or you can follow along in your article. You choose. Are you ready? Yes. Ozone layer. The ozone layer forms a thin shield high in the sky. It protects life on Earth from the sun's ultraviolet UV rays. In the 1980s, scientists began finding clues that the ozone layer was going away or being depleted. This allows more UV radiation to reach the Earth's surface. This can cause people to have a greater chance of getting too much UV radiation. Too much UV radiation can cause bad health effects like skin cancer and eye damage. What is the stratospheric ozone? Stratus, the ozone is a natural gas that is found in two different layers of the atmosphere. One layer is called the troposphere. It's at the Earth's surface where we live. Ozone in the troposphere is bad because it dirties the air and helps make smog, which is unhealthful to breathe. The other layer called the is miles above the Earth's surface. Ozone in the 
is good because it protects life on earth by absorbing some of the sun's harmful UV rays. Stratospheric ozone is found most often between 6 and 30 miles above the earth's surface. Ozone depletion. Recently, chlorofluorocarbons, otherwise known as CFCs were used a lot in industry and elsewhere to keep things cold and to make foam and soaps. Strong winds carry CFCs up into the stratosphere where UV radiation breaks them apart, releasing chlorine atoms. Each chlorine atom can attack and break apart or destroy as many as a hundred thousand ozone molecules during the time it is in the stratosphere. The chlorine from CFCs reduces or depletes the amount of ozone in the stratosphere. Other ozone eating chemicals are pesticides such as methyl bromide, halins used in fire extinguishers, and methyl chloroform used in businesses. What is being done? Countries around the world, including the United States, have seen the threats created by ozone depletion and agreed to a treaty called the Montreal Protocol, which is what Ashley talked about. This protocol will help you humans to stop making and using ozone eating chemicals. Good. How ozone depletion. affects UV levels. Scientists predict that ozone depletion should peak around the year 2010. As worldwide controls Reduce, reduce the release of CFCs and other ozone eating substances. Nature will repair the ozone layer. Good. By year 2016, stratospheric ozone should return to the amount present in 1980. Until then, we can expect higher levels of radiation at the Earth's surface. We need to take care to avoid the bad health effects that could result from too much UV radiation. Okay, boys and girls, take your pens, your highlighters, not your highlighters, your whiteboard markers. Remember, it's important to cite the text, paragraph, sentence, paragraph one, sentence one. Make sure you cite it in your answer. Using information from the article, what is the ozone layer and what is its purpose for our planet? You may begin. Okay, dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Ada, can you share your answer for us for task number one? The ozone layer is a natural invisible gas in the sky. Its purpose is to absorb harmful UV rays, but due to the completion of harmful UV rays, are seeping through. Thank you. Can you extend that by telling us the where you got your information? Remember, we're going to cite it. Can you tell us exactly where you found that information? I found my information in paragraph two, what is the stress food? Oh. Okay, thank you very much. We need another volunteer to share out their information. Um, Alexis. In paragraph one, sentence one, it states that the ozone layer forms a thin shield high up in the sky and protects up from the ultraviolet. Good, can you extend our um, your sentence, your explanation a little bit and give us the purpose. Why is it important for our, on our planet? I also think it's important for our planet because without the ozone layer, every single animal living will be dead with the ultraviolet rays. Okay, so it's, it's, again, it's very important and you found that information in our article. Very good, boys and girls. Okay, on to task two. Let's go ahead and read the first bullet. Read through the article again and explain in your own words why you think the author, the author chose to include descriptions of the different parts of the ozone layer. Cite evidence from the text to support your inference. 
Remember, as we infer, these are your own words. You're looking for the underlying meaning. Why would the author decide to have a whole paragraph? Almost a fourth of the article is dedicated to describing parts of the ozone layer. Why do you think the author decided to do that? Go ahead and take your whiteboard marker and write that down. Why would this author decide that in your own words? diagram of our ozone layer, so pull that out. And as we share with each other our thoughts about why our author chose to include this, you can also have your ozone layer right in front of you. So for example, where's our energy source coming from? And what are the two types of UV rays that the sun is pouring out onto our planet? Thank you for raising your hand, yes. We have, we have two types, and the UV rays are pouring through what, before it even hits our planet, what is it filtering through? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, it's filtering through our ozone layer and getting and starting to hit the earth. Absolutely. Why, as you talk to your neighbors and your partners, you can also refer to the graphic to help you explain your answer. So go ahead and discuss with your partner. Partner A, raise your hand. Go ahead and discuss with your partner your thoughts on why you think the author chose to add this to its article on the depletion of the ozone layer. You may begin. I think the author took his time, was patient, and did his best because he wanted to put a stop to CFCs, ozone depletion, and troposphere. I found this information in paragraph 2, sentence 2 to 4. Due to the graphic that says UV protection by the ozone layer, it shows that UVA and UVB is pouring a refilter and the UVA is pouring to the land and UVB is pouring to the water. The ozone layer is showing a thin shield around the earth and it protects us from life and death. Energy source from the earth is pouring from the sun. That the, that the author decided to include the parts of the ozone layer so the readers can get more knowledge from the text to help us become more aware of what we are doing to our planet and how we are destroying it. Okay. His inference discusses, he tells where he got the information. He also discusses, did you tell us where you got the information? No. I don't think you quite told us where you got it from. Can you extend your answer and give us exactly from the text where you got that information from or where you made your inference from? I made my inference from the, the paragraph where it says what is stratospheric Ozone. Okay, very good. Thank you. So he was able to extend it and add in that portion of where he actually decided to get this information from. It doesn't say in that paragraph that we're destroying our planet, but he was able to get that information simply by reading that paragraph. And that's all I wanted you to do today. I wanted to make sure that you can make your own inferences as you're reading. Okay, boys and girls, go ahead and erase your boards and we're on to our third task. Let's go ahead and read our third task for today. Ready and go. Read through the article and cite inferences that suggest that this author is concerned about the depletion of our own layer. Cite evidence from the text. Again, we're trying to look through the author's eyes. Why would he take the time to write this article? There is some very pertinent information in the article that gives a, su a suggestion why, but why do you think he is so concerned about the depletion of our ozone layer? Okay, think about it before you start. Okay, 
Dun, 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 dun. Um, can I get Samson and Navi to share out? Samson, can you stand up and share your answer for us, please? Why you feel the author wrote what wrote this article on the ozone layer? I think the author is concerned about our low ozone layer because he or she is talking more about ozone, ozone depletion. I also think that he or she is concerned because the ozone layer is like a real life and if that dies, the whole human race dies altogether. Okay, so you refer to the human race. Can you cite your, um, what paragraph you got that information from or where you used your inference from? Um, I inferred this from paragraph 3, um, sentence 1. The, uh, Recently, carbons were used a lot in industry and elsewhere to keep things cold and make the foam itself strong and scary. So you see up into the stratosphere where you UV radiation breaks them apart. Okay, thank you. So the author touched upon what we're doing in our, what we're doing to cause the ozone to deplete. Very good. So that's where you got your inference from. Thank you. Navi, can you stand up and share for us what you wrote? I think the author is concerned about the ozone layer because he got fed up with people putting microscopes in the atmosphere. That's all my information in paragraph 16. Okay, so maybe this is an article where the author feels he's, he's tired. He's tired of living on a planet where, like you said, he's fed up with us as humans depleting and causing the depletion of our ozone layer. Very good. Before we move on, turn to your partners. And you and your partner, go ahead and discuss the ideas that you have with each other. You may begin. I can infer that the author is concerned about the ozone depletion because according to the passage, paragraph 6, it states that we need to avoid bad health effects that is the result of too much UV rays. I can infer that scientists began finding proof that the ozone layer is going away or being depleted. Our last task for today, let's go ahead and read the first bullet. Ready and go. After reading the article, construct a letter to our local government on changes that you should be made to help replenish our ozone layer. Cite inferences from the text to support your ideas. Okay, so we've, we already know how to write letter, business letters. Today, for our last task, you are going to actually write a letter to our local government. What can they do to help us replenish our ozone layer? And we've talked about that before. But before you do that, go ahead and get into your groups. You remember how to get into your groups, right? Yeah. Okay, bananas. They should, they should make CFCs illegal. They should, all, they should, they should also, just they should also um, stop using fireworks. If we're continuing with our ozone depletion, that soon we're not going to have one at all, and it'll be the same Earth process all over again. We won't have an ozone layer. It would, and it, and it, it would take a really long time for our ozone layer to come back. We should not use CFCs because sometimes it's mostly in perfumes and shampoos and foam and soaps that we contain and using. And sometimes we should not use refrigerator motors because it contains it. So we should write a letter to the government of it and say we should um, use something by homemade. I think that we should stop using cars and do stuff like ride bikes and skateboards or sometimes just walk. But yeah, just use less cars. We should write about like how the ozone layer is being depleted and Maybe we should write about how the how the ozone layer is getting depleted around other countries. And maybe talk about to the government how should we how should we stop and CFC. And maybe we should write to the government that CFC should be banned. 
Okay, boys and girls, that's the end of our lesson for today. You will take your extension activity home. Let's read your task four that you'll be doing at home again. Ready and go. After reading through the article, construct a letter to our local government on changes that you think should be made to help replenish our ozone layer. Cite inferences from the text to support your idea. Stop there. You're also going to include evidence from the text, predictions about our future if nothing is done to protect our ozone layer, and use correct grammar and punctuation. So for homework tonight, you will construct your let you will construct your letter. You're going to bring them back tomorrow, and we'll get an opportunity to read them off in class. Ms. Carrillo actually bring envelopes. I have the address to our state government in Sacramento, and we're actually going to get an opportunity to put these in the mail along with our article that you read today. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and read the objective just to make sure we accomplished our goal for today. Today, I will use inference skills to determine the author's purpose for writing the text. And did we do that, boys and girls? Yes. yes, we did. So let's give ourselves a thumbs up. Very good. Go ahead and give your two hand, give yourself two hand claps and a great job. Great job. Okay. Thank you.